So let's take a look at the derivative as a function. Now in this video we'll be given the graph of f and we'll be trying to graph its derivative f prime. Now there are a couple things to keep in mind when graphing f prime. So the first thing is when the slope of the graph of f, so when the slope of f at a certain x value is equal to zero, then that tells us that the derivative f prime is also equal to zero at that same x value. Because remember the derivative is the same thing as the slope. So now the next thing to keep in mind is when the graph of f is increasing, we know that the derivative f prime is going to be greater than zero, or in other words, the f prime is going to be above the x-axis. And the last thing to keep in mind is when f is decreasing, then its derivative f prime will this time be less than zero, or in other words, the derivative will be below the x-axis. So now for these next set of problems, we're already given the graph of f, and all we need to do is sketch the graph of its derivative, f prime. So the very first thing when sketching the graph of f prime, given the graph of f, is I'm going to go ahead and look for those horizontal tangents. Because I know when the horizontal tangents are present, that's when the slope is equal to zero, which means the derivative is also equal to zero. So right here, we have a horizontal tangent, and right here we have a horizontal tangent. So obviously, both these places, the slope is equal to zero, which means if the slope is equal to zero, the derivative is also equal to zero, because once again, derivative is the same thing as slope. So now the next thing I'll be looking for is where the graph of f is increasing or decreasing. So from here to here, we know the graph of f is increasing, so that means the derivative will be above the x-axis. But if you pay close attention to the slope of f, obviously the slope is positive, but it gets closer and closer to zero as it reaches that horizontal tangent which tells us that the derivative is also above the x-axis, but getting closer and closer to zero. So it might look something like this. So now if you look at the graph of f from here to here, we know that the graph of f is decreasing, so the derivative is below the x-axis. And if we look at the slope, the slope is getting more negative. So we know the derivative is also getting more negative. So it might look something like this. So now if you go from here to here for the graph of f, obviously the f is decreasing in that section, so we, that means the derivative is going to be below the x-axis still. However, the slope gets closer and closer to zero. So that means the derivative will also get closer and closer to zero and eventually hit zero at that horizontal tangent that we talked about earlier. And then from here to here, the graph of f is increasing, so f prime, its derivative, will be above the x-axis. And realize the slope is increasing as well. So the derivative will also be increasing throughout. So the graph of f prime might look something like this. Now keep in mind, it doesn't always have to be exact, but this is a pretty good estimate for what f prime could look like. So now for the second problem, let's go ahead and look at this graph of f. So once again, the first step is to identify any horizontal tangents, because once again, we the horizontal tangent is where the derivative equals zero. So there's only one horizontal tangent in this problem, it's right here, and obviously that's where the slope is zero, and if the slope is zero, that means its derivative is also zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that right there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at increasing and decreasing parts of f. So from here to here, we know f is going to be increasing. However, the slope is going to get closer and closer to zero. So because f is increasing in that section, the derivative will be above the x-axis. But since the slope is getting closer and closer to zero, the derivative will also be getting closer and closer to zero. So it might look something like this. So now from this section to this section here, the graph of f is obviously decreasing, so f prime will be below the x-axis and the slope is getting more negative. So we know the derivative will also get more negative. So it might look something like this. Now from here to here, f is still decreasing, so the f prime will be still below the x-axis. However, the slope is getting closer and closer to zero, but not exactly hitting zero. So the graph of f prime might look something like this. It's getting closer and closer to zero, but not exactly hit zero. And so this is an approximate graph of what f prime could look like. Now for the next two problems, when trying to graph the derivative, there may be some x values where the derivative actually does not exist. So there are three main places where the derivative does not exist. The first example would be something like a corner. So it might look something like this at right this place right there, because a the slope is basically undefined at that area. And so a function fails to be differentiable in three main areas. The first one is going to be a corner. So something at around this point here, because the slope really does not exist. Now the next place would be a discontinuity. So it might look something like this. And then the third place is going to be at a vertical tangent or a vertical asymptote. So it might look something like this. Where we have a vertical asymptote 
or also a vertical tangent where the function might look something like this and right at this point there is a vertical tangent and obviously the vertical tangent the slope of that would be undefined now if you take a look at this corner here now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into that corner so it might look something like this if the tangent lines at the corner are getting steeper and steeper and are getting closer and closer to infinity that tells us that when we graph the derivative there's gonna be a vertical asymptote exactly at that point so now let's go ahead and given this graph of f let's go ahead and graph f prime its derivative so once again same thing here same process we're gonna first find the vertical or the horizontal tangents so we only have one here in this case it's gonna be right here where the slope is zero so that tells us that the derivative is also zero at that point so now we can go ahead and look at where f is increasing or decreasing so from here to here we know that f is going to be increasing so f prime is above the x-axis and the slope is also increasing so f will also be increasing however if you look at this corner here because there is a corner obviously that tells us the derivative does not exist exactly at that point now if i go ahead and draw another graph zooming into that corner obviously the slope gets steeper and steeper and gets closer and closer to infinity or negative infinity from both sides. So that's going to tell us that we have a vertical asymptote exactly at that point. Now once again on the left side of that vertical asymptote the graph of f was increasing so we know the derivative is above the x-axis and the slope is also increasing so the derivative is also increasing without bound to infinity. So it might look something like this. Now from here to here, we know f is decreasing, so the, gra the graph of the derivative is going to be below the x-axis, and the slope is getting closer and closer to zero, and actually reaches zero. So it's going to look something like this. And then from here to here, we know the graph of f is increasing, so f prime will be above the x-axis, and the slope is also increasing, so we know that f prime will be increasing as well. So it might look something like this. So that's going to be the graph of f prime, the derivative. So now let's take a look at this graph. So first step, as always, identify any horizontal tangents where the slope is zero. Unfortunately, there are no horizontal tangents. So now let's go ahead and look at where f is increasing or decreasing. So from here to here, we know f is increasing, so f prime will be above the x-axis. However, these are straight lines, so the slope is always constant, meaning the derivative will also be at a constant value throughout this section here. So once again, because it's increasing, the derivative is above the x-axis, or positive. So it's going to look something like this. Because the slope is constant, the derivative is also a constant value. Now, remember in a corner, a function fails to be differentiable. In other words, the derivative will not exist there. Now, since we have a constant slope from both sides, because both of these are straight lines, the slope is not getting closer and closer to infinity. It's staying at a constant value. So there will be no vertical tangent there. However, there is going to be a hole at that point. Now from here to here, f is going to be decreasing, so f prime is below the x-axis, and it's still once again a constant slope, so the derivative is going to be constant, and so it's going to be negative below the x-axis, there's going to be a hole there, and then it's going to be constant throughout the entire path. And once again, there is a corner there, since the slope is constant, there's not going to be a vertical tangent, there's going to be a hole there. And then from this section to this section here, f is increasing, so f prime will be above the x-axis, or positive. There's going to be a hole there. And then it's going to have a constant slope, so the derivative is also constant. So the graph of f prime might look something like this.